anyone who says they want to make it, the first attribute is the high level of discipline. If you don't have discipline, forget about success. No matter what God can do in your life, what keeps people moving, what keeps people ticking, what keeps people content, what keeps people focused, what keeps people perpetually having a vision and desiring success is the discipline. Discipline separates men from boys. No matter how good you are at what you do, but you should have the self-discipline. When I say self-discipline, discipline is simply defined as the self-imposed standards for the sake of a higher goal. You look at your life, you look at yourself, and you swear to yourself that you are going to be so highly disciplined, you are going to put certain standards for a specific goal, what you want to see five years from now. It's not just going to happen. The secret to that execution is discipline. How disciplined are we? Not in a crowd, alone. Are you setting a standard, a set of goals for a higher purpose? Or you are also living for now, living and getting by because you are breathing? Do you have a standard to say, this is Kathy, this is me, this is the discipline, this is what I want to see in my life. This is an individual thing, it's not a corporate thing. Do you have that high discipline? This is how I want to live. It might not make sense to people. It might be a lonely end. It might be questionable. But that's a standard that I've set. Looking at any company that has got compliance, expectations, not only that, that has got all the documentation it takes to run they will tell you there will be risk management. There will be also ISO specific certificates to allow that company to operate. Do you have those certificates to run your life? To say, I have my standard certificate. I will not waste my time on TV. I will not waste my life in the malls. I will not waste my money consuming. I will not waste my mind thinking about things that do not contribute. Anything that you do, you have to measure its effectiveness. How is it turning me around? I will not waste my time with people who are negative. I will not waste my life doubting my capabilities. Because when you have discipline, it informs the vision. When you have the vision, it also defines how you should live what you should eat, where you should go, whom you should talk to, who are your friends. It all comes from discipline. Anyone that you come across, you have to answer yourself, how are they adding value? You also help them to achieve what they want to achieve. A successful person not only takes people to take them where they want to go, but he or she understands where they also want to be, and she or he helps them as they help one another to get to where they want to. All the people that you are with now, are they helping you to reach your goal? All the things that you do, are they enhancing you? Tell me, how do you benefit from watching TV for five hours? What do you benefit from always being on the phone? <sighs> because if it's not constructive, you're wasting your mind, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your, your resources. The first thing that one needs to do is the high level. Say, I want to do this. I'm not going back. And I'm choosing my friends carefully because they're informing my vision. Thank you, Lord. As we walk through the vision with a huge discipline, others will fall off. It's normal. Because when the vision expands, then there's more contribution. There's more resources. There's more talent. There's more performance. There's more competence. You cannot find everything in one person, but God will give you. Do you have the discipline to see this is from God? 
The discipline gives you vision. Now, if you say, I have problems, it means you did not spend time to know what do you really want. But it's not the money, it's not the education, it's not the resources, it's not the material. It's the lack of seeing where you want to go. Because when you want to know where you want to go, you also know where not to go. If you are going to town, you know how to get to town. There are roads that you know you must not take. Now, when you have a vision, not only do you know what you want to do, you also know what not to do. Proverbs 29, from verse 18. Yes. The people perish because of lack of vision. So we have poverty issues, we have divorce issues, we have business failure, academic stagnation, disunity, all these quarrels because we lack the vision to see so that we instill the discipline. When I have a vision, I am disciplined, no matter how I feel about Lucia, but I have a set, high set of standards. And if this is my friend, this is my partner, this is my wife, this is my husband, I have a vision why I'm with them. That vision must give me discipline. I am a student. I not only go to school or do the things because I'm registered. Five years from now, I have a vision. So I have a discipline to study my books. Nobody pushes me. That's how powerful discipline is. It supports the vision. Yes. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there's no vision, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. Ah, because you have to see it. You can't talk about something that you have not visualized. You have to have a defined, definite picture. Five years from now, I'm doing this for my son. Six years from now, I want to change the world for my family. You cannot be living in vacuum. You have to set a standard, not only a standard, a high set of standards to achieve that goal. What is it that you have to do that you sacrifice for later? First thing, have a boring life. It's good. <laughs> have a lonely life. It's good. Be a reader. It's good. Be informed. It's good. Don't let the week pass without touching a book that will edify your knowledge. It's good. No matter what you come across, learn every second. It is good. People perish because of lack of vision. People perish because of lack of knowledge. My people, if they know what they know, they will change that scripture. You know that scripture? Not in a, a spiritual form, in a practical applicable. If my people know, they will change. That's what it's saying. If a person knows I have a vision, I know what I want to do. As I'm going to my vision, there's short left. When you come to church, you look at so many roads, defined roads, named roads, recorded roads, in the GPS and in the Google Maps. But when you come to Reipsach, you also know that there are roads you can't even tend to because they will not take you to the place where you want to go. Yes, there are roads. They can't stop being roads, and you can't stop seeing them. But will you take that turn, or will you move to your goal? Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Mm. My people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yes. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You see that it's not the issue of unemployment. It's not the issue of corona. It's not the If people knew what is true about this pandemic, do you know that the first thing we would have done is to eradicate fear? But the lack of knowledge is affecting our vision. And fear is engulfing the country, it's engulfing the world, engulfing our families. People have stopped living because of lack of knowledge. Until such time when the scientists or the findings, they are out, the true findings, that it's another flu. 
there are underlying symptoms that can kill a person, but it's not that disease. If it was, everyone who had it, they would be dead. And there wouldn't be recoveries. But it's like any flu virus. Now, my people, not only do they perish, they stop enjoying life. They stop dreaming. They stop pursuing. You will be shocked now what the whole pandemic has done to people's thinking. People have stopped desiring. They're scared. People have stopped having their vision. People have stopped enhancing because a desire comes from God. God gives you an idea. God gives you a desire to do something. But if you don't have a clear vision that will be informed by a high level of discipline, you'll keep on talking. You will not execute. You will have to live your dream. You have to challenge yourself with your own thinking. What I am feeling now, what I want to pursue is from God. I'm unstoppable. Fear is more drastic than prison because you are imprisoning yourself mentally, physically. You are looking at things, thinking of things that are not true. You are saying to yourself things that are not non-existent. You are torturing your potential. You are crippling your capabilities when you are fearful. Understand that, like I said last week, every problem is seasonal. Nothing is permanent. So there's no issue that will come to you and it doesn't have an end. You must know everything has got its beginning and its end. Now look towards the end and keep on dreaming. All those desires are from God. But you cannot think, keep on thinking and wishing if you are not disciplined enough to follow your dream. Discipline is king. Can I please hear an amen? amen. amen. I'm going to be disciplined to be a high achiever. I'm going to speak what I believe. I'm going to implement what I feel inside of me. When you are disciplined, people believe what you say. Everybody talks. But to be disciplined to execute, you have to stick to what you believe about yourself. Who knows Casta? You don't know her, but you've seen on TV. She's an athlete. When you see an athlete advertising any material, take, for instance, Nike, the interest, it's not even in the Nike. They are advertising the discipline of that athlete because of his or her winning spirit. Now, when she is wearing that Nike, you go to sports scene, you are inspired to wear that Nike because in your mind you think you'll run like her. But we forget the discipline she has to be able to even be associated with that name. How many times does she practice? How many things does she not eat? How many places does she not go to? Because Nike is celebrating her discipline. They are trusting her discipline with their material. They come and wear our material. It's not what she's wearing that has taken her there. It's who she is when she's alone when that has brought her to fame. How much discipline? Her discipline of training. Discipline of selecting certain food. Discipline of keeping healthy and fit. Discipline of winning. When she wears the thing, we are celebrating her winning spirit. Not even what she's wearing. Because not everyone can start advertising. You look at Tiger Woods. Look at Michael Jordan. All these people, when you are saying to them they are famous, check the discipline that they have to have reached where they are. You can't say you are an athlete, you eat seven times a day, I'm a queen, a snowfish, archer, you don't run, you don't drink water. There's a certain lifestyle that they've adopted to keep them where they are. Do you have that discipline to get to the vision where you want to be? It doesn't just happen. 
Now, when you see, you say, ah, I know that I'm called into this area. I'm saying, do you have that discipline to say, on a Saturday, I'll be excluded. I will seek the Lord for myself. I will pray. I will fast for my calling not to be seen. You have to seek discipline, not success. Success will follow when you are disciplined. Disciplined in everything that you do. Someone is watching to reward you. You won't have to apply for anything. The discipline I have in executing my work, I don't have to be followed. I am reliable. I am accountable. I am trustworthy. I am faithful. The success definitely will come. Now, people pursue success minus discipline. That's why you read about them. Lots of them in newspapers. She was, he used to, they were. It's the lack of discipline and reliability in the small things that God has given you. Because God is watching. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are doomed because they lack knowledge. So you go to Proverbs 29. Here, people are doomed because they lack knowledge. Proverbs 29. People are doomed because they lack vision. Vision and knowledge, they are cousins. Discipline is the father. Vision and knowledge. Discipline, no matter how good you are at what you do, if you don't have the discipline, especially when people are not looking, discipline. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. People perish without vision. Do you see that these things are correlating? They are variables, dependence. Now, one can't do without the other. You can't say you have a vision if you're not disciplined. You can't say you are disciplined if you don't have the knowledge. Because what costs people? It's ignorance. A lot of people succeed in wrong things, not what God has told them to do. Because they don't have the discipline to say, what did God say? Be disciplined. Do what God told you. Yes. So it's Proverbs 29 verse 18. You can read about it. People think it's the same. Two different contexts. One is talking about the know-how. Another one is talking about seeing. Not only seeing using your sight. You use your mind to see your vision. It's inside of you. It's not outside of you. You can never even explain to anybody what you have seen. It's only revealed to you. It is a revelation when there is knowledge. Now, people lack knowledge. They don't have the revelation of what they must do next in their lives, in their families, in their businesses, in their careers, in their socioeconomic growth. They don't have, because it must be revealed. How does the revelation come? I have to have knowledge. If I don't have the knowledge, I'm as good as dead, because I'll always know what, but I won't know how. The how. That's a big question. Yes. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there's no vision, the people perish. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Mm -hmm. Where there is no vision, people perish. perish. A man with a vision lives a narrow life in a narrow road. A man without a vision lives a haphazard life. Now, those are the defining moments for you. Who's who in the zoo? Are you that man with a vision? It means... Your way, your life, your way of doing things will be very narrow because it's a revelation. Not many people will understand you. You are living with revelation. If it's a revelation, it's revealed to you. It's not spoken about. It's not written anywhere. It's inside of you. And it's only you who sees it. It's only you who has that picture. It's revealed. It's a secret 
that God has given to you, this is what you must do to change your finances. Oh! To change the history of your lineage. Yes. You know, people like Andrew. Andrew was not doing much. He wrote no book, but he was a connector between Jesus and the disciples. We still need those people. People who have a revelation with who and how. Show me, O oh Lord. The people who have gifts to open doors that have never, no eye has seen. It has to be revealed. God has got no mouth, no hands. He uses people. Now, you're not only a woman of God here in the pulpit. You can foretell stocks can foretell opportunities and resources. You can foretell. When you start getting a revelation, it becomes global. Every area. Because that's where the problem is. It's not tons of cash, contracts, graduations, information. He says, lack of vision, lack of knowledge. That is the problem that leads to poverty, sorrow, sickness. All these things we are trying to eradicate those are the sources, the causes. Now we're dealing with results. When you see a symptom, it's result. But what is the root cause? No vision, no revelation, no knowledge. Out of ignorance, people perish. Do you hear that? Vision, revelation, lack of knowledge. All these things have got a spiritual element. You cannot stop attributing government, leadership, business with spirituality. It's one thing. If it was not spiritual, then everyone would be making it. It's gifts from God. Though people call it success, it has to be revealed to you. Not everyone has what you have. Why? It's a gift. It's got nothing to do with you. All you have to do, keep the discipline and the thrust, the trust, thrust, very high between you and God. God must trust you with any type of resource, any amount of finance, any opportunity. He knows that you will not change your face. You're disciplined. You can still eat avocado when you have billions of friends in the bank. Yes, I mean, it will not stop you from taking an Uber or walking, even if you have all types of cars, because you have the discipline. Now, many people, when the situation changes, themselves, they change. Their character changes. But you need to be so disciplined. It's only God who knows where and how far you keep yourself humble and disciplined. You'll see what God will do for you. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Without prophetic vision, people run wild. But blessed are those. <laughs> with no, 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 Pastor. Please read slow. I'm actually wild. Why? Because? There's no prophetic vision. Aha. Uh -huh. But all oh, wild everywhere. Yeah. Let us know everything that you're experiencing is in the Bible. Yes. Kiddy Kabana, Kiddy Kadushi, Kiddy Louis Vuitton, Kiddy. But it's not wild. Because of what? Lack of prophetic. Prophetic. Vision. Because prophetic, it's something that you can foretell. You can know five years from now where you'll be, corona or no corona. Yes. We have dear families. You know their potential, but nothing is happening in their lives because they are wild. They are everywhere, and nobody can tell them anything. Now, here you are, you have the grace. You have not only your prophet, your sister, your mother. The things I teach you, I'm telling you the truth. Some of the things no ear has heard. It has to be revealed. There's no other way. God is not confused to raise something that is already existing. That's part of the purpose. To research, to teach, to preach, and to make economic wealth, not only on earth, in the kingdom of God. That's my calling. 
like Paul, because it has to be revealed. One thing I do, I will not waste my time on something that I would not mandated to do. And I'm very clear on that. There are things I will come right off and say, women can do it, but not me. A lady, a normal mother, even my children, I put it across and clear. That's not the type of mother you have. The type of mother, she reads, she writes, she does this, she does this, she does this. This scope, my friend, go to Tabel, because I know I'm not good. <laughs> go to mom to, to go. I know the people that I work with. I stick to what I do and I know best. And I'm happy. I know my number ones. I can't be wasting time with number fives. I get somebody who's good at doing that. It's revealed to me what I need to do. It's very clear. Anything that's not on that list of the top five priority list of mine, I don't bother myself with it. I'm not even ashamed to say I don't know this thing. I give it to the one who knows. Because you can't juggle around when you have vision. You are not wild. You are not everywhere. One thing you do. We were not born to do everything. Jack of all trades becomes a master of nothing. Though they are busy. What is this one thing? It has to be revealed. And once you get it, you're content. I was telling somebody, I said to them, I was appointing a CEO and a CFO, and I told them, if you think it's costly to hire a skill, wait until you hire the wrong person. Person who does not have the passion, the attachment, the commitment, the love of what you want them to do then that is frustration. As they come and they have a revelation, they're doing what they're doing. Nobody has to tell them it is inborn. They do it with all their heart. And they love it. They know that they come to you to help you. You go to them to help them. You can never get anything from anyone without losing something and helping them out in their own need. That's a secret of success. It's a win-win. But it must be revealed. For me to work with Pastor Muzi, he has dreams. Now, if he comes and becomes an, an HR executive, a lead pastor, whatsoever area that he's in within the Echoen group, he has needs. Now, Echoen also has to contribute to what his vision is. It's not a one-side thing. We have to ask ourselves, why are we coming? Crossing paths. You can't succeed if you are not going to help other people. We are an ecosystem. Nobody's a system alone.